Welcome to another episode of the magazine. Today we're here with Jim and Carol Mahaney. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank nice you to be here. So tell us some of your background. How did you get interested in photography? Well, I think I started uh, by working with uh, Northeast Maritime Institute. We were working on their textbooks and the things they were using way back when. Okay. And uh, I just found that I always needed a photograph of the rigging or some other aspect of what was going in their textbooks. So that's how it began. Okay. Uh, I then hooked up with uh, some great people down the Cape who kind of molded my photography interest. And Carol's always been a second shooter from the get-go, so <laughs> that's how we got involved. That's great. What's some, uh, some of your uh, background for work? Well, I was an educator for a full career, both yeah. here in Fairhaven, and I finished uh, over at Normandon Middle School in New Bedford. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So that, but you weren't a photography teacher? No, not at all. Not at all. And Carol was a nurse, so oh, wow. that was pretty far away from photography. Yeah. So what kind of service do you offer for photography? Well, it's really a philanthropic kind of uh, okay. yep. uh, episode. We, uh, we, I try to make of it a business, but Carol keeps saying, oh, Jim will do that for nothing. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Uh, but we enjoy that. That's uh, what we like to do. Um, but we started doing a lot of landscape and travel photography. Uh, but more recently, we're really interested in portrait photography. So if you have a, a corporate portrait or a, uh, a headshot you need or anything of that nature, we've been working in that area. Oh, wow. Wow. So you're doing both then. You're doing, doing both. yeah, so yeah. landscape. So what are some of the places that you've uh, done in the South Coast area taking photographs of? Well, to just about everywhere, I yeah, think. Uh, really yeah, have camera, will travel kind of thing. Uh, trying to stick a lot with Fairhaven and uh, certainly South Coast. Uh, but our hometown is special to us, so we do a lot of architectural things here and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what everyone likes to see, and then we try to look for something that other people don't <laughs> really take pictures of. So that's, that's where we go with that, yeah. Well, I have a great picture that you took of Fairhaven Town Hall hanging in my office. So thank you. Thank I you. see it every day. Thank and you. It's a work that's, of art. That's great. Thank you very much. So, what are some of your favorite shoots? Well, uh, the the most emotional one for us was uh, during COVID. We had a, a young lady, uh, Nadia Torres, who uh, hadn't been to school for two years, and therefore, uh, according to mom, hadn't had uh, a school photo taken. So. She asked if I was still fo taking photographs, and I said, yes, I am, Samantha. So she stopped by with her daughter, Sophia, and Nadia, and Jerry, her husband, and we set up our little studio here at, uh, at church, and uh, it was just a remarkable afternoon. Uh, she's just such a special person, uh, you know, a special needs uh, youngster, uh, and she was wonderful with us, and uh, it brought a tear to our eye working with that. Yeah, a shout out to the Tories family. They were so sure. helpful. Not, uh, Sophia was holding backdrops for us. And, oh, that's great. And, uh, it was just a wonderful experience. That's a, that's a good story, you know, mm -hmm. throughout COVID here. But uh, how did COVID affect your business? Well, pretty, pretty much altogether. We stopped doing photos. Uh, we took advantage of it a little bit, I think, yeah. uh, Traveling around. We traveled around and found different places from here to P-Town, from here to New York. And no one was around. Yeah, no one was on the road. Yeah. No one was right. on the road, but we were able to expand into architecture and things like that. Oh, nice. Enjoy too. What are some of the unique things that happened with that? What are uh, some of the unique places, actually? Um, well, when we go to New York City, we like to people watch, and yeah. we were able to do people watch there. You know, they just move so fast, which is nice. But then we did some really... Great architecture, buildings, flat iron building, and things like that, and very yeah, nice. very nice. Washington Square. It's, yeah, it's, really it's kind nice. of a gambit of uh, yeah. of photography yeah. areas that yeah. we've we've worked on, you know. But we're really focusing in on portraits and things in our sure. local area. Yeah. Great. And so, Carol, what's your breakthrough story here with photography? Well, you know, I've been following him for a long time. I stand behind him, but I've taken some pretty good shots that I've gotten some awards for. I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> the biggest one for me was when we were working for, we do work on occasion for South Coast Almanac, and mm -hmm. they sent us on an assignment to um, Factory 5 okay. Racing in mm -hmm. Wareham, and they were more than generous with our time, we were, we were given free reign of the building and 
taking photos any way we wanted. There was some uh, spots you couldn't go to, you know, but they were great. And we got some great shots, and we were in the magazine, and, you know, we have a lot of photos in the magazine, yeah. <laughs> don't we? we? Yes, we do. <laughs> I, I called the magazine because they had... We submit to the magazine, and they choose which photos they use. Okay, yeah. So uh, they chose some of Carol's photos as well as mine. <laughs> and uh, I called and said, look, can you make sure that you put both Carol and I as the photographers for the, nice. for the event? She said, absolutely, and offered to put uh, the name of the photographer by each and every photo in the article. Wow. And there were many of them. And I said, no, that won't be necessary. I said, uh, just save yourself the work and the real reason was she had more images <laughs> chosen than I did so <laughs> you know, we it just kept great, it as it was that. a great day it was, it was a it, good day yeah it was a good day but we like to go to the auto place in Newport too and take photos of the yeah. uh, Audrain, 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 Audrain. Audrain's and uh, Newport Car Museum and things like that you know oh that's great yeah it's fun it's and so fun. you've been recognized then for your work yeah. Um, quite often, I have uh, two covers with uh, South Coast Almanac uh, and a couple of feature uh, items there, like uh, going down to Factory 5. Uh, we've both won uh, ribbons, first place in art, and beyond with uh, Whaling City Camera Club. And through them, we compete at the regional, the New England level. And I've won a couple of black and white uh, images there, and the Plymouth uh, photography's annual thing. I, I won a very nice uh, award there. That was a little shock to me there. I said, geez, I, maybe I can do this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're doing it very well. Oh, thank you. So thank how you. would someone get in touch with you if they wanted to do a portrait or they wanted to uh, have something, you know, shot? Yeah, well, we're really low-key. So if they would like to reach out on, on Facebook and get in touch with me that way, uh, that would be the best way. Or if they see us in town, uh, <laughs> You know, we, ju we just uh, signed up for a, a 50th class reunion of one of our favorite high school groups, so we'll be Great. doing that in the spring. Uh, so those kinds of things come up. Each, people reach out, and so there's not, there's not a big, you can't go to my studio. My studio is uh, <laughs> uh, on, the road, on the road, so we can yeah. pretty much take uh, this kind of a setup with us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wherever we go. And First Congregational Church of Fairhaven has been, wonderful with allowing me to use this as a studio when needed, so it's really nice. You do a lot of volunteer work here. We do. Oh, we, we do. do. Yes. <laughs> we do. Yeah. A lot of volunteer work in here. Yeah. We've, you know, we've I volunteer him. Yeah. <laughs> we shoot here at church uh, often. I'm trying to do that a little more. We've been uh, shooting the uh, annual Hall of Fame dinner for the okay. yep. uh, Fairhaven High School and also doing any work. Uh, Bob Foster, the president of the Alumni Association, will give me a buzz and we'll try to do anything that Bob needs. So uh, usually any. We also put a calendar in with the uh, oh. community nurses. Yeah, uh, they were so we submitted some images for that. And oh, so very nice. By all means, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So what lies ahead? Do you think? What lies ahead? Um, we don't do weddings. <laughs> 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 no, we, we've tried that in small on, on a small scale, but that's that's okay. But anything anybody wants, we'll definitely find yeah, a place really wherever they want to have it done we'll go there and you know we, we do yeah. a lot of philanthropy and just yeah. I find it's important I, you go but you look back at photographs and there's a history there there's an emotion there and there's a great deal of of things that people will hold dear in the future mm. that's pretty much what we're, we're looking for you know if if you can look at our work and there's some emotion that comes from your looking at our work. Okay. We've, we're doing the right thing now. Sure. You've had some of those emotional kind of draws with your photography. Can you ex uh, describe one of them? Um, well. <laughs> or, or many. <laughs> yeah, many. Well, one, of the, one in particular was an early uh, image of uh, uh, a harbor. I'm just going to slip my mind now. Uh, Quisset. Quisset. Quisset Harbor. And it, it came out really, really nice. Mm. And you never know with photography, it has to strike the viewer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as far as sales and things of that nature, but this one woman stopped by and uh, paid me a pretty substantial amount of money to get started. Mm -hmm. And it was where they used to tie their boat up. Oh, okay. So there was a connection with this, because Quiz said it's a beautiful harbor anyway, yeah, but, yeah. and that's usually the connection. So uh, talking with folks and find out uh, what they do 
what's their favorite hobby, what that, and we kind of incorporate those kinds of things into the into the okay. show. Okay, all right. So yeah. it makes it very personal. Yeah, try to try to. Yeah. Okay. Any other shots when you were driving through the the roads of Maine or anywhere? Oh, Maine. I get my group up in New Hampshire when we pulled over and I took a whole row of the motorcycles and. <laughs> <laughs> We heard them coming up bare notch. I stopped them all <laughs> just to get the photo. <laughs> so come on over, and they all parked and, and posed. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody, so I usually jump in. <laughs> so you have some fun photos too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah. yeah, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. Yeah. What do you think the the best photo that you've taken so far? Personally, my own photo that I've taken. Yeah. I think my. Um, when I won the award with, with the uh, violin. Violins, a, a series of violins on the wall hanging at a violin shop. And Carol asked, talked to the, the owner of the shop and yeah, said, would you mind if we took some photos? And she did, and she won first place. And also photo of the year. Photo of the year wow. for that one, yeah, yeah. And I'm giving that to someone soon. I, I did it for a purpose, and I haven't been able to work it out yet. But yeah, I'll give it to him. What about you, Jim? Um, Jesus, there's there's a lot, but there was the the one emotional one was we lost a, a, a wonderful guy from uh, the camera club, Jose, and um, when Jose passed, I had I had already snuck him in here to the studio to take some shots, and I had several of him um, on shoots that he and I have gone on to. He's a real close photography buddy, and he died during COVID. Oh, I'm um, sorry. So. Had the family got in touch with me and asked me if I had any photos of Jose, and I said, well, of course. And we sent them in, and uh, they all made, uh, not only did they use it uh, in a, because you couldn't go out or anything during COVID, so they did something online, and they had a session there. They've used it, uh, a radio station in Boston okay. used it, and put that in their advertising about Jose. He was a real unionist kind of guy oh, wow. and worked at uh, UMass Dartmouth in the labor uh, area. So, uh, yeah, so those were some of my favorites. And the ones that I took of, of Jose here, actually, he loved and loved the black and white version. Uh, kind of looked like a Che Guevara uh, <laughs> look to it, yeah. So, that, yeah, that's the one that really strikes me as is the most fond one that I've shot so far. And that one there is spread all over because they made T-shirts out of it. They did. They yeah. they so made uh, T-shirts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're from Puerto Rico yeah. to New Bedford. They're nice. everywhere around town. Yeah, work is being displayed everywhere. Oh, yeah. Everywhere, everywhere, yeah. Well, I can't thank you both enough for your time and your talent uh, that you bring to our community, and, and keep on clicking. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> thank you, Charlie. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the magazine. Today we're here with Ron Fortier. Welcome, Ron. To our show. Thank you. We're going to hear about your talents. So tell us about some of your talents that you bring to our community. Well, I, um, I've always been an artist. I was, I was uh, very much exposed to the arts when I was a, uh, a kid in New York City. Uh, my mother uh, left uh, with me to, to go to New York uh, to pursue a singing career. She was a father singer. Okay. Um, and uh, we lived on the uh, Upper East Side uh, with her uncle, and um, and then uh, we moved on down to the West Side to Columbus Avenue. So I really got a in those seven years uh, time I got a, a real life education. Sure. Uh, but the uh, uncle was uh, really crazy about the arts, and it seemed like every single day um, we'd go to a museum or a gallery or whatever, and. Um, so I ended up getting my BFA from the uh, SMU, Southeastern Massachusetts University. Okay. It's still yeah. hard to say, UMass Dartmouth. <laughs> um, and uh, from there, I went to the University of Miami for my uh, MFA in painting. Mm -hmm. And um, well, with the economy being the way it always was with, with my generation, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, my high school graduating class, uh, I ended up uh, going into advertising and marketing. Um, okay. While I was at Miami, um, a couple of the guys there were retired advertising people, and they had to get their MFA to teach. Mm -hmm. So uh, they taught me some tricks, and I uh, ended up doing that as a backup. And then um, 
got to a point, you know, I owned my own advertising agency, actually two of them, and did consulting work. And then I got to a point where um, I decided I'm going back to painting. So I went back okay. to painting. And um, in 2016, after a divorce, I moved to Portugal. Okay. And uh, this set up a studio there. Nice. And um, I decided, you know, this is great. I'm going to be painting and living in a beautiful place. And uh, But before I left, um, a woman that I had interviewed for my friend Jeff Watton, uh, another Fair, Fairhaven resident, yes, yeah. uh, he's a co-founder of uh, Spectrum Marketing Group, um, he asked me to interview this woman to replace the graphic designer that, uh, that uh, went on to start his own business. And long story short, there was no buzzers and bells and violins or fireworks or anything. But um, in the time that I had left to go to Portugal, I was like, oh, gosh, I didn't expect this. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, we got married and uh, she's a graphic designer and um, she's still working for Jeff. And uh, she, um, she's been a great partner and she's uh, also... Um, encouraged me to change my direction. I was an abstract painter. Okay. And um, she said, you know, you've got a lot of stories to tell. And I think you're kind of hiding behind the, uh, the abstract work. You're hiding some emotions. And uh, so I started doing that. And uh, wow, what a turnaround. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, it was actually around the pandemic. Okay. Um, I'd always been fascinated. My dad was a janitorial contractor in, in the city of New Bedford, uh, Roland's Clean Sweep Janitorial Service. Mm -hmm. One of his accounts was um, Charles S. Ashley Insurance, okay. Charles S. Ashley and Sons Insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they subsidized the, um, <clears throat> or underwrote the um, uh, New Bedford Arctic Whaling Expedition of 1871, which turned into the New Bedford Arctic Whaling Disaster. <laughs> Of 1871, nothing yeah. to laugh at. No. Uh, Forty New Bedford vessels were were stuck in the ice, crushed and sunk. And um, they had these great lithographs because the insurance companies back then, whenever there's a disaster, there was, they always made right. lithographs out of them. Right. And uh, I remember cleaning the offices with him, and I was always mesmerized by it. And I thought, what would it feel like to be on a vessel? You can't move. Mm. You're cold, but you at least you're can stay warm and then you can hear the moaning and groaning and crushing the, uh, the timbers and okay so you build a tent on the ice but what do you do after that so it was always like this sure. thing okay. and uh, so I started doing that and then uh, her sister uh, was doing a podcast on it's called da Daughters Dialogue uh, her sister is the first African American woman admitted into the Daughters of the American Revolution okay and she was telling a story about uh, their third great grandmother. Then don't know their name. Uh, all the, uh, her name. All we know is that her daughter, uh, along with her sister, so two of the girls, were sold away from her. Uh, mm. And uh, the story was passed down uh, to uh, her grandmother, and um, it was. Charity Ann, mm -hmm. and I decided then and there I wanted to try to illustrate how how could you do that, mm -hmm. and um, you know she even has the last words to her daughters before they were taken away. Bye bye my babies, I'll see you in the by and by. She was so resigned that she would never see them again, that she would see them in the hereafter, right. and it was pretty painful. Um, so I started doing that, and then one thing led to another, and uh, I basically uh, uh, have now become a painter of um, hidden history and uh, family tales. So it all tells a story. It all tells a story, exactly, yeah, yeah. And you've caught the eye of uh, a local writer, too, Don Wilkinson. Yes, yes, who called me the unabashed chronicler of tragedies. I think that's, that was the quote that, uh, from Don. Um, he, he put it together pretty interesting, um, uh, Lee. He said, you know, um, my mother being a father singer, father was about, you know, rejection, uh, uh, yearning, uh, loneliness. You know, it's it's, it's right. the Portuguese blues, basically, right. as people, you know, but, uh, would, would refer to it. But I, I think it's Portuguese opera, which also has the same elements. Mm. You know, opera is always about unrequited love or, or whatever. 
And um, so he said, you know, uh, after all, I am the son of a father singer. So um, mm-hmm. painting all this misery has actually made me happier. Happier. Interesting. Uh, Paula, my wife, would say uh, when I was doing abstract work that I was um, it's like, well, you're never happy about anything that you do. You're always like, you know, because to me it was a very serious mm-hmm. thing. It was like, um, it was very... Um, intellectual abstract art is not just throwing paint on a canvas mm-hmm. uh, there's so much more to it uh, it's about composition and such and the ultimate goal of the abstract artist is is insane it's to paint nothing which is that's why you keep doing it it's like looking for a sasquatch yeah. <laughs> you know um, so I was always trying to figure out ways of getting around that and uh, I ended up um, you know, going off in this little foray based on a painting, an old painting I did back in the 80s of the Arctic whaling uh, disaster. And she's like, see? (laughs) The weird thing is, is that um, I'd never gotten the kind of reaction from my work before. Steve Remick, uh, a friend and a a phenomenal painter from Dartmouth, uh, and I had uh, an exhibit at the Dartmouth Cultural Center in 2020, I think it was, and um, he uh, went from landscape painting to doing um, COVID healthcare workers. Uh, th- these okay. these nurses with, mm-hmm. you know, look like they're death warmed over with tape, you know, scars from the tape, and it was just a miserable, miserable existence for these healthcare people, mm-hmm. uh, the guardian angels, so to guardian speak. Angels, uh, and um, he and I did this dual show, and uh, people were. You know, what they saw with his work was easy to understand. And they looked at my work, and you could tell that, you know, the heads were sort of cocked. I did um, the Greenwood Massacre, uh, America's Guernica Greenwood, the Black Wall Street Massacre. Mm -hmm. And um, people were sobbing. I mean, you know, Steve's like, I never thought we had to bring tissues to one of our openings Mm -hmm. (laughs) until now. Mm -hmm. Um, But... I'm not out to preach. I'm just out to point. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. So getting into the post-pandemic yeah. area uh, here now, uh, it really did change your art. And what yeah. have been some of the other major work? Um, <clears throat> I did a triptych, uh, grant-funded uh, triptych, uh, called uh, Children of a Common Creator, Deathless Spirits. Uh, it's based on Chapter 87 of Moby Dick. And I thought, hey, you know, born and bred... <laughs> New Bedford, right, right. I'd eventually have to take a bite of the Moby Dick apple, so sure. to speak. And um, the triptych is uh, 12 foot wide. And basically it shows, um, the scene shows nursing whales under under the water, and you see the Pequod on the left. And then um, on the right you see um, uh, Queequeg Lansing, a whale who's nursing, uh, who just gave birth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the horrible thing. It, you, sh- you can't tell the difference between the umbilical cord and, and the bloody lance line, you know, from the harpoon. Yeah. And, but there's a lot of, um, um, you know, the violence of the industry, uh, the, the two different worlds, the them and the us. Uh, you know, now we're a little bit more environmentally conscious. Uh, they're all hard subjects, um, but... Uh, you know, and they don't, they're not just historical. I mean, I've got, I've got paintings planned. In fact, the next one that's going on the easel now is my dad, uh, when he was in Canada, uh, who never ever thought he'd come back to the United States, uh, until somebody said he had to return to, to, uh, register for the Korean War, for the draft. And, uh, he ended up, uh, meeting my mother and marrying her, and that didn't turn out well, but he ended up staying down here. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's stories. Sure. It's stories. So for some of the budding artists that will be watching the show, um, what is a South Coast Artist Index? Oh, the South Coast Artist Index is something that Jeff and I, uh, when Jeff and I first uh, met, uh, um, you know, we hit it off together uh, right away. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, in, he, he's a few years younger than my, my daughter. And uh, we just started talking about this, that, and the other. And he said something, and I said, oh, I've got a clipping from uh, Mary Jean Blasdale, who's the former curator of the Whaling Museum, uh, she's, uh, she's the one that uh, wrote the, uh, uh, the directory of New Bedford Artists, and I, I thought it would be great if they, that could be continued. 
So um, this is pre-pandemic that we had another economic downturn and we started building something called the artist profile. And then we came back uh, with the index and long story short is we've recorded over 140. We've just released, uh, actually 150. We've just released number th 137 this week uh, of uh, visual performing, uh, literary, and uh, we're going back to culinary because Don Wilkinson said, you gotta bring the culinary artists back. Sure. And um, so uh, we're working in cooperation with the New Bedford Whaling Museum. They've, uh, digit, uh, they've uh, put these podcasts into their database, okay. which will be there in perpetuity. Uh, and uh, so we're dealing with contemporary, meaning living artists. Mm -hmm. we're, we've done dead artists. Uh, you know, we've had people speaking for them, obviously, mm -hmm. but we want more people like that. There are so many artists that have gone by. Um, uh, and we want to document them. And uh, so between the podcasts and the articles that we write, um, it's a collective digital archive okay. s focusing on the creative community of the South Coast. So how can someone get involved with that? Uh, all they have to do is go on theartistsindex.com, and that's T H E A R T I S T S. I N D E X dot com, and uh, and uh, you know check out the site, and then under contact you'll you'll see a drop down. It'll say inquiry form, and then just tell us what you're thinking, how you want to be involved. Are you searching? You want to you have something to share? Because that's what we're looking for people sure. to share their stories, mm -hmm. and uh, or do you are you a contemporary artist who wants to be uh, on the podcast? Excellent. Well, Ron, thank you for sharing your story with our community and thank thanks you. for all the great talent that you bring to our community. Thank you. I much appreciate it.